Hello, Chris Kiek here, and in this video today, I'm going to show you how to replace this bent plate clip here, um, basically at the end wall where I have this girt uh, coming into essentially the bottom of the rafter. Um, you know, this current connection here is, you know, definitely very difficult to do. You can't get the bolts in there. So I'm going to show you an alternative connection um, that we can just manually model. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just uh, select on this girt. I'll right click on it and say create view default views of part. That'll give me my four basic views here. Now, when I look at this, we're going to see that um, I've got my elevation view, which is pretty much what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm basically trying to get into a nice, clean elevation view where I can, um, you know, basically delete this out and manually model in something. Now, I'm going to double click on the background of the view properties here, and I'm going to switch um, essentially my view filter to filter out uh, sheeting and trim. So we'll just select that and, and modify here. All right, there we go. Now I'm just looking at the girt coming into the rafter. All right, now when I come over here to the left, I'm gonna just window around essentially uh, all of that connection that was there before, and I'm just gonna wipe that out. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically put an angle in here. And I'm gonna use an angle six by four uh, by five sixteenths just so you can see kind of how asymmetrical angles work um, and how to model those in Tecla structures. Now, the first thing is that I can actually see here that um, you know this, this um, girt and the web is coming across and it's intersecting right here at the bottom of the rafter. Well, I'm gonna come up here to my construction object and use a construction line. And this is again on the edit tab. So here at the top of Tecla, edit tab, construction object, construction line. At the lower right hand corner down here on my snapping toolbars here at the bottom, I have my uh, snap to geometry lines and points on, which is the second button here. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and say intersection. And so that'll snap override and you'll see that there's a snap right there where the top of the web and the rafter intersect. Now I'm just gonna come up four inches and I'll click there. Then I'm gonna click again to start another construction line and I'm just gonna go over to the right and let ortho kick in and I'm just gonna click here so that way I have a line that's essentially intersecting at the bottom of the rafter for a four inch leg. So really the angle that I'm gonna put in here, it's gonna be all the way over here because there's a vertical line here that's now four inches. So watch, if I come in here and I say intersection, I'm looking for that intersection where the line goes to the bottom of the rafter. And if I actually come straight down here to the top of this, um, the girt here, the girt web, you'll see that it's four inches. So there we go. That is exactly where I'm going to place my angle and where I'm going to cut this essentially back. Now, the first step is um, I might actually cut the, uh, the girt back. So to do that, I'll come up here to fit part end. I'll click on the uh, girt. And then what I can do is I can just pick two points here um, just along that line. And now I have that cut back. Okay. The next step is I'm actually going to rotate ever so slightly here just so I can see that there's that intersection um, essentially for... Uh, where the angle is going to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the steel tab and I'm going to double click on the beam command. That'll activate the beam command and it'll open up the properties over here on the right. I'm going to go to the drop down of save settings and I'm going to load up angle. That just fills in the material grade, uh, some of the default uh, numbering and, and uh, naming settings and things that I want here. But I'm going to go ahead and type in angle six by four by five sixteenths because I don't believe there's a quarter. Um, and again, I could also just come in here to the catalog, go find that particular angle, double click on that, and I'm good to go. Now, Tecla here at the lower left-hand corner says pick the start point of the beam. Well, I don't want the start point of my beam to be at the center here, and this is why I kind of rotated into 3D. I'm going to actually hold down control, so that way I set a reference point. And I know that I got a reference point by holding down control because Tecla at the lower left says pick the start point of the beam. So it doesn't see that I've actually picked my first point. I just did control left click to set a reference point. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hover over this line where ortho kicks in, and I'm gonna make this eight inches wide. So I can either just wait till the snap uh, rests on four inches there, or I could just type in four, and then that's the distance in that direction it'll go. Now Tecla says, pick the end point of my beam. So that was actually my first point. Well, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hover my mouse back towards that original point and I'm gonna type in eight inches. And then I'll press the uh, enter key on my keyboard or I can press the okay button. Now I have my angle modeled in here. So there we go. That just shows you how to quickly get that angle in. I used that intersection point at the center of the girt um, to offset four inches and then go back towards um, the opposite direction in eight inches and there's my angle. Okay, now when I'm looking at this, the good news is that my angle, uh, the long leg is horizontal and the short leg is vertical, which is what I wanted. 
But uh, what I really need here is I need that uh, this leg of the angle to actually be on the bottom. So my first inclination is to come over here to rotation and uh, switch this from back. Um, and maybe I'll switch this uh, to front and let's see what I get. So I'll say modify. And when I do this, like it, it does show me the uh, other side, like so that way this is towing upward, which is what I want. But the problem is that it um, actually rotates it around and I, and I kind of need that vertical leg back over here. So this, is, this happens all the time to new users. They end up spending a lot of time trying to figure out how do I get angles in here correctly? Well, really what happens with angles, because it's an asymmetrical profile, is that you have two things going on. First of all, you do have these rotation properties, um, but you also have the direction of your input points. So there's a neat little macro that's actually gonna swap those points for me. So watch this, I'm gonna clear my selection out uh, or my search out here in applications and components. I'm gonna type in swap, and you'll see that there's this swap handles macro. Now the way this works is I've gotta first have my part selected, and then I double click on the swap handles macro, and what it's gonna do, it might take a second or two, but it's going to reverse the picking points. So watch this, I'm gonna undo, notice that this is magenta, this is yellow. So if I undo, select on a part, this is yellow, and then this is magenta. So basically what this macro does is it's swapping the endpoints and reversing the input direction, which is basically reversing the toe direction in which the angle is facing. And that's exactly what I want. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take, uh, take this angle and I need to shift it over to the right uh, of the input points. So that's most likely going to be my, uh, probably my uh, plane here, or it might be my depth. So let's just switch this to left and see if that's it. So when I do that, I modify, you'll see that the angle now lines up with the back face of the angle to the input points, and I have my angle in correctly. All right, now I've rotated myself uh, underneath the rafter, and I'm gonna go ahead and weld the clip to the rafter. I'll come up here to the steel menu, I will then go to the weld command, and since I'm gonna do sort of the uh, half depth staggered weld, I'm just gonna come in here and go to weld, and then I'll choose the create polygon weld option. I'll now uh, click on the beam, because that's the part I'm welding to, and then the uh, prompt here at the lower left says pick the part to be welded, which will be the angle. And I'm actually just gonna come in here to the midpoint or of, you know, essentially right at the center of the angle, and I'm gonna click here, and then I'm just gonna hover my mouse over to the left, and I'll type in two inches, and that will give me two points, I'll then middle mouse button, and that will complete my polygon weld. So that gives me basically a weld there um, on that surface. Now I'm gonna kind of repeat the same thing, except I'm gonna to go to the midpoint. So watch this, I'm gonna to go to steel, and then I'll go to weld, polygon weld. Again, I'll pick near the edge of the rafter, then I'll pick near the edge of the angle, because that's the part being welded. And then this time I'm just gonna come on the near side. So I'm gonna say right click mid, and I'm looking for basically the midpoint of that plate. And there it is, it's right there. A little bit hard to see in 3D. So this is why I also tell people to try to model in 2D when you first get started, because um, when you see all these kind of lines when you're in transparent, it might be a little bit hard to kind of see. Um, so I'm a little bit more experienced, so I know exactly where I'm snapping to and what I'm seeing. But I'm just gonna hover over here, and I'm just gonna, again, hover my mouse and type in two. And then that gives me essentially that point, you know, along the top face there. I've got two points picked, I will middle mouse button, and now that weld is complete. So I'll interrupt. All right, so there we go. Now you can see that essentially I've got, um, you know, my two welds in there, the stagger near side, and I'm going to click on the edge of the rafter, right click and say inquire assembly, and you're gonna see that this is now shop attached. Now, what I can do is I can just say uh, control P here, so that way I get in a true elevation view. I see my welds, I see that everything's lined up with the girt. Now, if you did really wanna take this a little bit further, you of course could grab the weld, and if you wanted to be 100% accurate for like robotic welding purposes, if, if, the, weld, if the gap's not too big, because sometimes a robotic welder can't uh, identify and deal with this. Um, but what I can do is I can just kind of move this up. Now, here's another thing. Again, I don't have an actual apparent, uh, there's no like intersection there for me to work with. So again, I'll just come up to maybe my construction line. I'll pick from here, just get a little construction line in there. And if I wanted to move the weld geometry, I can move this up and then just go straight to the intersection. And then there we go. Now that's a little bit larger. And then I could, of course, increase the size of this weld. So let's say that because of that gap, that needs to increase a little bit. So there we go, we've got essentially the weld in, that's attached to that assembly, and the last thing that we need to do, um, let's just go ahead and rotate back into 3D, is we need to come in here and we need to put in our bolts, essentially to bolt this clip. 
Now this is a six inch, uh, let's see, six by four. So I believe three and a half inches is essentially the gauge um, you know, off of the leg. And so that's what we'll go ahead and work with. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the steel command. We'll use the bolt command here. And Tekla says, pick the main part to um, in which you're going to be bolting secondary parts to. So that's usually going to be the supporting member. And in this case, the supporting member is going to be the clip. And so I know that seems strange because it's a connection part, but it's the actual piece that is holding up the other piece that we're gonna attach. Now, whenever you put in bolts, the second part you pick is going to turn yellow. And that is the piece in which field bolts will actually uh, bill out with in reports or show up on the shop drawings. So the second piece or that yellow piece, which is the supported piece is the one that the bolts are gonna be associated to. Now, what I can do next is after I've picked that, it says, uh, you know, it's still asking me, do I have any more parts to bolt? I'm gonna middle mouse button because I don't have any more parts. And then it then says, pick a point to indicate the bulk group origin. Well, let's do solid here for a second. And I'm actually going to pick again, like here um, at the bottom of the angle. And so I just wanna make sure I'm getting to exactly where I want. So I'm gonna click right there and that's at that center. And then I'm just gonna go over here to the midpoint. So I'm just rotating around and I'm gonna go over to the midpoint of the angle and that six inch leg. So when I click that, it puts in my bolt. Now I'm all done with this command. So I'll right click and interrupt or press escape because I don't wanna put any more bolts in. And now I need to kind of modify things here so that way we can get this all set. Well, the first two points that I picked are essentially my bolt group X direction, right? So origin here at the back heel of the angle and then going outward. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually set an offset here. So over my bolt properties at the very bottom in the X direction away from the start point or the first point I picked, I'm gonna type in that three and a half inches and that will offset from the back heel of the angle that distance. Now, I basically need a gauge of bolts. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I will go ahead and say maybe four inch bolts here and my bolt Y. So I'll just say four, modify, and there you go. Now you can see that essentially I've got my four inch gauge and that would match essentially what I would have on my GERT as my standard pattern. Now I need to come up here to the top and I'm gonna change the bolt diameter to half inch and then I'm gonna change uh, maybe the bolt grade to A325 or A307 depending on what you're doing and say modify. And then you may also wanna turn off the washer here, so modify if you don't require that. And there you go. And again, if you had any uh, oversized holes, uh, just looking at that, let's say that we wanted to put oversized holes in the clip. So the head of the bolt is on the top here, right? And uh, I'll actually show you a couple things just for training purposes. Let's say that I actually wanted the nut on the top side here. So to reverse this around, I could go from front and I could switch this to back and that reverses the direction. So now the nut is on the top. Well. When we look at parts with slotted holes or oversized holes, essentially the applies that you pick here or these checkboxes, the checkbox that applies to the two materials that you're and where you wanna put the actual oversized holes in or slots in is based on being the part or the ply being closest to the head of the bolt. Well, I put the head of the bolt on the bottom of, you know, towards the girt now and the nut is actually up here on the angle. So if I want the oversized hole on the angles, I actually need to click on this uh, second checkbox I'm gonna switch this to oversize. And then let's just say I want an eighth inch oversize here on the holes. I'll modify. And then if you actually look closely in here, and if we uh, turn the transparency on, there's a standard hole down, a very tiny hole there in the girt. And then there's a eighth inch oversize hole up here in the angle. Now watch this, if I select on this and I reverse this back down here from back to front, you'll notice that the oversize hole is actually down in the girt now. and I, if I wanna reverse this and get it back, I need to uncheck this, check the special hole, press modify, and then you'll see that this has changed. So there we go. This just shows you a kind of an example of essentially how you can manually model in a connection that you might not be getting automatically across from MBS and slide rule into Tecla. And then you can easily put this in. And then in another video, I'm gonna show you actually how you can wrap this up as a custom component and then apply it to the other side of the sidewall here, or the end wall, sorry. Now, one last thing to showcase here is that whenever you manually model in clips or connections, if they are standard clips, then you'll need to select on this. And I'm gonna come up here to the part numbering. And I'm using part numbering because this is actually going to be a shop attached to the rafter. And I'm just gonna use A and G as an example here. And then I'll come in uh, you know, where the one is and I'll just say negative nine, nine, nine. 
And the negative is basically going to force this piece mark and tell Tecla that it's going to assign this to be ANG 999 as the piece mark. So I'll just uh, go ahead and say modify. And then when I do a numbering, that will appear um, for my piece mark and will show up on the shop drawings. For additional training and setup and configuration of MBS slide rule with Tecla structures, please reach out to me at my contact information shown and I'd be glad to help.